Narcissism or love? Jurenita's reading, and we're going to elaborate on what love really is. Go on. Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels, but have not love, I have become sounding brass or a clanging cymbal. And though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and, all, and though I have faith, so that I could remove mountains, but have not love, I am nothing. Mm -hmm. And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned, but have not love, it profits me nothing. Love suffers long and is kind. Love does not envy. Love does not parade itself. It is not puffed up, does not behave rudely, does not seek its own, is provoked, thinks no evil. Is not, wait a minute, let me stop right there. Love is not easily provoked, y'all. When you have somebody that's always jumping down your throat for stupid stuff, hmm, the love tank is pretty much empty, and who knows if they're really in God and if God is in them. It is not puffed up, does not behave rudely, does not seek its own, uh -huh. it is not provoked, thinks no evil, does not rejoice in iniquity, but rejoices in the truth. Bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, Thank enjoys you. all things. Thank you. Now listen to this, you guys. Thank you, Juanita. Listen to this. Number one, look at the characteristic of a narcissist. Any of you on YouTube, I'm talking for a particular person, but for those of you in general who deal with this, if you're involved with a narcissist in any way, family, friend, foe, <laughs> boss, or, or mate, whatever the case is, may even be one of your children. The bottom line is the narcissistic characteristics, they are puffed up, they seek their own, which means it's their way or the highway, right? They are accusatory. They're constantly blaming. They don't take responsibility. Whatever is messing over them is your fault. You're the one at fault. You're the one that did that wrong. You're the one that said that wrong. That's a narcissist. When you see that characteristic, you can basically trust that there is little to no God in them, period. Because... God is love. Mm -hmm. he, he isn't full of love. He isn't loving. He is love. Mm -hmm. And his love is supernatural. Nothing like any love you feel on this earth. His love is agape. Me and Andrea, me and Rashad, we are phileo love. That's fellowship. Right? Mariel and her husband or husband and wife, that's Eros love. That's the erotic thing that goes with the love in the marriage. But God's love is, is agape, which is unconditional. No matter what I love you, no, no matter what I support you, I'm going to work with you on this. No matter what I forgive you, I will do my best to understand you to the best of my ability. I will do everything to understand you and help you understand me. I will listen to you. You may have an idea that I hadn't thought about. So it doesn't have to be my way or the highway, right? I'm not better than you. I value you. I respect you. Do that love. When you see someone claiming to be a person of God, a man of God, a woman of God, a servant of God, whatever of God, but they don't have the basic ingredient. That's like saying, here, I baked you a cake. And it looks weird. And you're wondering, why does it smell weird? It looks weird. It feels weird. It doesn't even look like a cake. Well, how? Well, why do you call that a cake? Doesn't even look like one. Oh, that's just because I didn't put any flour in it. Huh? How are you going to have cake without flour? That's the basic ingredient. 
That's the starting ground. It's the same with being a Christian. How are you going to be a man or woman of God without his love? How are you going to show his love and be narcissistic at the same time? The Bible says, I got to look it up. I want to make sure. Uh, James chapter 3. Here we go. Verse 9. Therewith, bless we God, even the Father, and therewith curse we men, which are made after the similitude of God. Out of the same mouth proceedeth blessing and cursing. My brethren, these things ought not so to be. Doth a fountain send forth at the same place sweet and bitter? Can the fig tree, my brethren, bear olive berries, either a vine, figs? So can no fountain both yield salt water and fresh. See what I'm saying? Let's move on down. Verse 13. Who is wise man? Who is a wise man and endued with knowledge among you? Let him show out of a good conversation his works with meekness and wisdom. But if ye have bitter envying and strife in your hearts, glory not and lie not against the truth. This wisdom descendeth not from above, but is earthly, sensual, and devilish. For where envying and strife is, there is confusion and every evil work. But the wisdom that is from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, and easy to be entreated full of mercy and good fruits, without partiality and without hypocrisy. And the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace of them that make peace. So there's no partiality in that either. Not, you know, you're the dog and I'm the prince. You know, you're the peon, you ain't about nothing. I'm all that and a bag of chips. You better watch me, kid, because you ain't about nothing. You do everything wrong. No, it ain't about partiality. You know, I hang with them. I respect them, but I sure don't respect you. No, that's not God's way. That's not God's love. So when you deal with how people always want to claim Jesus as their claim to fame, He's my Lord and Savior. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Praise Jesus. Oh, bless you, brother. Bless you, brother. But curse my kids. Curse my wife. Curse my husband. Curse my brother, my sister, my mother, my father. F y'all. Screw y'all. Y'all ain't worth nothing. You do everything wrong. Look at you. You ain't about nothing. You're never going to be nothing. Blah, 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 blah. That's why we never should have had you. All of that crap. That is not love. God is not in that. Don't even tell your child a lie. Don't even tell your wife or husband a lie that you love them when you treat them like that. Because you don't know what love is. And God is not going to bless your mess. Now, that's me chewing out the folks that are narcissistic abusers. Now we get back to the victims <laughs> of the perpetrators. Ask God constantly to get in your heart and heal. Ask God to get in there and remove all the damage done from, from day one. And all the stuff you can't even remember anymore. Get all those hurts out. Get all the wounds out and heal them. Remove them from your psyche, from your emotions, from your spirit, and even from your body, because some of that stuff sets up a chain reaction in your body as well. Ask God for supernatural healing and supernatural deliverance to get the, see, a lot of that brings rejection. Get the rejection out by the root, Lord. Get it out by the root. I cast out rejection by the root. In Jesus' name. And you work with God as he works with you. Because he will give you crazy dreams, baby. First dream I ever had. 
when he started his healing process was me slapping my mother upside the face. I would never do that in real life. But God showed me that's what my emotions wanted to do. And it shocked me. It scared me that I was that angry at her. And I asked God to get it out. I started asking for healing. Lord, Lord, I don't want to resent her. I don't want bitterness in me. Lord, get it out. See, when you come to Christ, you have come out of the world. But now God has to work down through the years to get the world out of you. It's a work in progress. And God will use the vicissitudes of life to take your temperature periodically to let you know where you've grown and let you know what he wants to heal. What needs attention? I want to deal with that. And he's not saying it in a critical or indicting manner. He's saying it as a caring father. I don't like the way that looks on your skin. Let's get you to the doctor. I want to deal with that. That's what God is saying. Because he loves you and he doesn't want you to be tormented by your emotional scars and those bitter memories, those roots of rejection, abandonment, and all of the above. He doesn't want you dealing with that. He doesn't want anything disturbing your peace. Okay, I'm going to stop there. But that's just a little side note from our meeting, from what we talked about. God bless you.